manage your data, you can get some of the data that you, you frustratingly can't get from Facebook using Gitpanel that helps you uh, thank fundraisers and kind of steward uh, your Facebook fundraising. Um, and I can tell you a little bit more about that in the webinar afterwards. So quick recap about Facebook giving tools for those that you who don't get it, I'll just kind of simplify it for you. Basically there's kind of two things. The first one is the donate button. And the donate button is where people can give money directly with their card, payment card, through Facebook without leaving Facebook. So Facebook take the payment. Um, and think of the donate button as this floating thing that can appear in different places. So now it's appearing in Instagram stories, that it can appear on the bottom of a Facebook Live on your page, it can appear if I, as a user post, I can add your donate button, if you turned it on, to my post to raise money for your organization. And in fact, I could talk about, for example, UNICEF in a post, and I could add Save the Children's um, uh, donate button. Uh, and I know because I did it and sent it to them, and they were like, oh my goodness. Uh, so the users have a large amount of control over the donate button too. And then fundraisers, fundraisers are just like you would think with peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, like just giving, anyone can start a fundraiser for something. And they kind of come in two flavors. Uh, one flavor is the fundraiser that someone starts themselves, so that's like birthdays have taken off, people start fundraisers for their birthdays. But also you as organizations can start fundraisers now, which acts a little bit more like crowdfunding, because you're actually doing it yourself, if that makes sense. So a little bit confusing, but that's the simplest way I can do to explain it in one minute. Is that cool? Yes. So, um, three years ago, people kind of, or two years ago, people were saying this to me, kind of, people will never put their card details into Facebook, they won't trust them, that kind of thing. And you know what? It turns out they will. Uh, people aren't that, care, don't care that much about their privacy. It turns out. <laughs> uh, not when their friend is saying, oh, donate to my birthday. That is actually a bigger pull than, oh, I wonder if Facebook will steal all my card details. <laughs> so uh, it turns out people did. Uh, One million charities now use the tool, well over in fact. We think it's near 1.5. Uh, in the first year, birthday fundraising did 300 million. Probably know the background story of that coming from Charity Water and Scott Harrison. I wrote a blog about it on uh, 101 Fundraising if you want to check that out. The whole background to, to birthday fundraising. Um, Giving Tuesday last year raised 125 million in the US because Facebook did a large matching campaign. I fully expect there'll be a match this Giving Tuesday. Facebook haven't confirmed that, that's just my opinion. Um, so we'll wait to see what happens. And they've raised over a billion so far, but it, it, we think it's closer to two. So large scale adoption, no one is co coming up to me and going Facebook isn't gonna be successful with fundraising anymore, that's not happening. Um, and so the big driver has been these birthday notifications. So uh, who's had one of these two, like two or, uh, a week or two before their birthday, right? So your, your birthday's coming up, you get a, a, a notification in the newsfeed, and you click that link and you decide where to kind of donate your birthday. And if you as a charity are lucky enough to appear in the list or, or get chosen, that person starts a birthday fundraiser for you. So this is, um, you know, for ages in digital marketing, we've had this kind of slogan, like, build it and they will not come. Yeah. You know, like, build it and they will come was from that Kevin Costner movie. But in digital, we say, well, don't expect to build a website and just suddenly raise a lot of money. Well, it turns out on Facebook, if you signed up and you were in the right place at the right time, you made a lot of money without doing anything. Um, and so those charities that were brave enough and on the on the cutting edge enough to turn on Facebook donate and not worry about it too much before birthdays even came along were the ones that made a lot of money instantly. So it just shows like with the adoption, you just gotta, gotta be there. You might not know what happens next. So right now we don't know what's gonna happen next with Facebook giving tools, but if you're not in it, you're not gonna win it, all right? Um, so here's, uh, I can't, they won't, if they're a give panel client, they won't let me say who they are. So it's either a very large dog charity or a very large cat charity. <laughs> I'll leave you, I, you'll, you'll never know. Um, there you go, about 2,000 birthday fundraisers coming in a month, about 70 grand's worth of income. 94% of all of their Facebook donate income is from birthdays. It's very common. Um, this is a UK men mental health charity. 16,000 fundraisers in 2018. Birthday, uh, not all of them birthdays, but 90% of birthdays. 88,000 donations, they raised 1.3 million. Out of nowhere, it's become one of their biggest revenue streams. And this is literally a quote from them, and this is classic, this is what we get all the time. We didn't really do anything, we were quite surprised. And my heart broke when I found out that not one of those fundraisers had been acknowledged by the charity for that. They donated their birthday, an intimate resource that we all have, but yet it, they, we can't even communicate with these fundraisers. It's not just this charity's fault, it is just the way that it's set up, it's very, very hard to thank, and that's what inspired us to build Give Panel. Um, in memory, crossing over with, with birthdays has been a big thing. So we work with a, a small charity called SANS, who is an amazing organization to deal with baby loss, which is just an unimaginable subject. 
Um, and they started raising about 10,000 a month coming through. And then we started to do some cool things with it and they, they, did, they had a 70,000 month. Um, so they've raised nearly half a million, this is probably out of date now, half a million since they turned on the tools. And again, it's just kind of because it's that birthday moment combined with the in memory thing has just, has just come together and worked. And it's, it's kind of a difficult uh, marry of two things, isn't it? Happy birthday and then baby loss, but um, turns out that in memory is quite big when it comes to birthdays. Would you like to? I have a quick question. Yeah, sure. So when, when I've seen people do these birthday fundraisers, it seems like they only raise maybe like a few hundred pounds. Is that normal? Is that contributing to these huge sums? Or like what would a person, an individual, expect to get? It, it honestly depends on how much energy, how well connected that person is on Facebook, how much energy they put into their fundraiser, all these, those kind of other things. Um, we are hoping eventually to have enough charities on Give Panels to anonymize some benchmarking data. But right now, I can tell you around about 120 pounds would be a good average for a birthday fundraiser. So um, an individual person doesn't really need to be doing a lot. No, in order they just for it literally to really add up. Yeah, totally. And um, my my <laughs> wife did one for um, her uh, 40th birthday, um, and her mum had just died of breast cancer, so she she uh, did that last year, and she raised like 800 pounds because I think it was a more of an ask there. I mean, it sounds sounds kind of uh, hard to say. Um, I did one for my 40th birthday where I also said I'd run half the marathon that's still going on like at 600 pounds So it kind of depends then there's a kind of like people that just start it off the notification Don't do anything with it and leave it and it raises like 20 30 pounds So I think it's a big mix in there and we, we want to get more analytics Facebook aren't really sharing any details with us and one of the things on GivePanel I'd love to do is anonymize some data for the sector so we know um, Yeah uh, event fundraising is starting to become big. So we saw this with the London Marathon, lots of London Marathon donations coming through because when you start talking about what you're fundraising for on Facebook, they actually put a prompt, set up a Facebook fundraiser to the user, right? So um, Live Strong in the US did a test where they sent 50% of their, um, their fundraisers to set up on their own platform and 50% through Facebook. And they found out that the Facebook ones raised twice as much and also there was an, uh, a reduction, 11% reduction in zero dollar fundraisers. That means fundraisers that never, never raised anything. So Facebook is, and I'll explain why, gonna raise more than other platforms, I believe. Um, not just birthday fundraisers. Some organizations don't get birthday fundraisers when they switch on the tool. They're just not in the right place at the right time. For some reason, they're not charting there. But that doesn't mean you still can't raise from Facebook donate. So we work with a very small donkey charity, Safe Home for Donkeys. And they just story tell and put the donate button there, story tell, put the donate button there, story tell, to put the donate button there. And they've raised um, uh, well over 50,000 now, so this is out of date. Just by kind of, not even asking, just telling stories about what they're doing with, with donkeys in the field and just adding the donate button there. And it almost looks as though Facebook kind of puts it in for you and so the charity's not really having a strong ask and actually that can work, work really well. You don't have to put a donate button on every post, by the way. You want to be putting it on strategic, strategically. Don't just like whack it everywhere. Just so you know. Um, and then you can do appeals as well. So like I said, you can start your own page fundraiser. So we work with UNICEF and um, Marco can tell you a little bit more about this. But basically in Sweden, they start off in Sweden, but it spread to Norway. And they, they hacked Black Friday. You know, Black Friday is where people literally kill themselves by television for <laughs> half price or something. Um, they kind of went the other way and said, what about Yemen on Black Friday? And it was quite clever, it went viral, they invited a lot of people, they raised uh, over a million dollars. Um, so, just checking time. It's about the power of the social graph, okay? So the social graph is the fact that in Facebook, we all have connections, and those connections have connections, right? And so now, it's the first time that we've had a fundraising tool integrated inside the social graph. Because we used to have to take the Just Giving page link, and we used to have to put it into Facebook. But now, it's inside Facebook already. So, when my friend starts a birthday, I'm notified. When um, someone donates on a fundraiser, I'm notified. So it kind of builds, and that's why it works really, really well, as it's inside the social graph. And also, supporters love it. So, um, you know, 88% of people who have donated through Facebook said they'd donate again. And if you've looked at these kind of stats, that's very, very high. <laughs> very high statistics. So it's fun for donors, it's engaging, it's very, very easy. It's a two tap of, the, of, their, of their screen, and uh, off they go. So key points, new income stream, it works really well for small charities as well as large charities, um, raises more because of the social graph. The other key thing is it's growing, right? Because they haven't started to really push it into Instagram. I mean, it's starting to happen. So right now you can create a sticker, a donate sticker inside uh, Instagram stories. But that Instagram will start to be adopted within Facebook fundraising as well, which is a massive platform of 2 billion people. 
Um, and also Facebook have kind of other ideas, um, uh, like such as like team fundraising and kind of the idea that five people could do an event together with their combined social graph is quite a powerful idea um, that I think will, will work really well. Um, I suppose one of the key points is you have to get the data, and that's one of the challenges um, uh, of, of the Facebook tool. So I wanted to talk through five actions. How am I doing for time, Lorne? You're fine. Okay, cool. Five things to action. I mean, one would be to turn it on. <laughs> so who who here knows that they've turned uh, their characters turned on the tool? Okay, great. So a lot a lot of you. And who here knows that getting the tags and 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 dancing and doing that? Yeah, me. Okay. So it's interesting. You see, I see these things from time to time. Again, and we'll share this, right? After yeah, the please. Episode. Yeah. Um, the second thing you've got to kind of try and do is start thanking your supporters. So start thanking your fundraisers and communicating with your fundraisers. And this is the incredible thing about Facebook Donate Tools, is when someone does a fundraiser for you, you don't get their data. They're never even asked to consent to give the data for you. So if I start a birthday fundraiser for your organization, all you get in the tra that transaction report from Facebook is you get a link to my fundraising page and you get my Facebook name. You don't get a postcode, you don't get an email address, you don't get anything in order to put it on your database or CRM system, right? And that's the hard thing. So because of that, you can't thank them in the way that you're thanking other donors, right? You can't kind of automate that thank you letter and all those kind of things. Um, Sarah's like, <laughs> Sarah uses the apology, she's going to do the pain of some of this stuff. Um, uh, the, and so thanking becomes this thing where you have to, in America they call it working the walk. You know, you have to go through that person's fundraising page and you have to comment on their fundraising page and thank them. And so that's the kind of best practice met right now is to go to that fundraiser's page and say, hey, Nick, thanks so much for setting up a, a, a fundraiser for us. You know, your funds are going to go towards X, Y, and Z. You know, you're awesome. Thanks so much. And I'm put an image there. So like, here's a sand with their thanks image and their thank you message. And here's um, leukemia care. And again, the key like give them a certificate with the amount raised and things like that. They, they go that extra mile. But it's a lot more work than perhaps a lot of charities are used to when it like something like Just Giving, where you used to you get the report and you can kind of automate some of that. Uh, there's lots of nods of people saying, yeah, they understand that. So um, this is one of the things that Give Panel helps with. Um, so uh, with Give Panel, what you can do is you can basically upload your Facebook transaction report. It'll work out who all your fundraisers are and give you a fundraising data report. And then we also have like an integrated message message that you can put in the form that allows that fundraiser to give you a little bit more information. So um, it'll be something like, hi Nick, thanks so much for raising money for us. You know, we'd love to make sure we receive your funds correctly and send you a thank you. Would you mind filling out a little bit more information? They click that link, they fill in a few more details, it gets sucked back into Give Panel against that, against that transaction report. So that's kind of how we do it. And then we give you this list of fundraisers, which you don't get from Facebook, and we allow you to track and label which ones you've reached out to. So it's kind of the first version, but it's, uh, I was talking to one um, uh, Pancreas Cancer UK today, and they said they used to have two people together spending jointly five hours a week on doing this manually. And then since Give Panel, it's taken one person 20 minutes a week. So it's massively reduced the pain. We still haven't automated it all. Um, there's kind of two types of technology in this world, I think. There's kind of technology that replaces human beings, and then there's technology that makes human beings smarter. Do you, do you know what I mean? And we're kind of the second one. So we're not, we're not doing anything that you wouldn't do manually. We're just kind of increasing the speed in which you do it and, and improving the way that you do it, the quality. Um, so that was number two. It was, it was starting to thank your supporters. Number three would be to leverage what you're already doing. So you don't have to do anything different. So here's an example of American Foundation for Suicide Prevention who um, World Suicide Prevention Day uh, is in September every year. So I think this was on the 18th of September. And um, you guys probably already have like awareness weeks and things like that, right? Uh, or awareness days. And so they hijacked um, this uh, hashtag stop suicide that was being used by lots of different organizations. And they decided to say, look, if you have a birthday in September, donate your birthday to stop so hashtag stop suicide. And they threw a little bit of kind of Facebook advertising behind it. 11,000 fundraisers set up, they raised $1.7 million, wow. okay? Just by leveraging what they were already going to do for that key moment. And I've got an example later on from Sands as well, who did it for Baby Loss Awareness Week. Um, other things that you can do, so any page can now create a fundraiser. So a corporate could do a fundraiser for you. So we've seen some kind of like, you know, Arsenal Football Club doing one for Save the Children, for example, that kind of thing. So corporates can now set up fundraisers on their fundraising pages. So if you have corporate relationships, 
and this corporate is, I mean, don't pick one that isn't big on Facebook because <laughs> it will be embarrassing for them probably. Like, but if there is one that has some traction on Facebook, that's a really good thing. Celebrities ambassadors can start pages. Uh, so this is Sam Smith. Do you guys know? I'm really out of date. He's, he's a musician. Um, <laughs> I was just like, I'm so old. Um, the, and so he raised, um, he, the idea was 26,000 pounds for his 26th birthday. I think he ended up raising like 23, 24,000 pounds. Um, and he put a lot of energy into the videos and stuff that he promoted on, on his page. So you can do that kind of thing. And I always say, remember the conflict, concept of like network of influence. There are some people who are very famous in the world, but no one, they're not really connected on social media. And then there's some people who no one's ever heard of, but are really connected on social media. And you know, that concept that they have a higher network of influence online than some famous people you might meet. So you've probably got kind of gold gems in your, in your you know, circle of influence now that you could do fundraisers with. Um, and you could do your own page fundraisers. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that thing just because of time. Um, but basically, it takes, the thing about it is it takes five minutes to set up. It's so easy to set up, and we've done so many now. And the, the key learning from what we've done so far is when you do a page fundraiser, don't treat it like a DM appeal, okay? Treat it more like a kind of, so it's less please donate now, and it's more community-based. It's more let's all chip in to try and hit this target. Do you see what I mean? So it's actually... It's kind of like online community fundraising more than it is like direct marketing. Does that make sense? Yeah, but that's the big thing we've learned. And so it tends to be actually the kind of social media communication staff who are really good at doing these fundraisers and not the individual kind of giving staff, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then this is boring, snoring, sorry, but gotta say it, you've got to work out those internal processes, you've got to work out your data. Give panels does help with that. Um, so what data will you import? How will you claim gift data? There is some work to do on that but it's kind of once it's up and running, um, it should, should work fine. Um, and then finally, once I think once you've started to get that process in place, you can start pushing it. And so we're seeing more and more organizations starting to put a little bit of budget behind birthday fundraising. So this uh, was a test we did with Sands, uh, Baby Loss Awareness Week, and we're able to actually, on Facebook ads, target people who already know your organization and then filter by their birthday okay so we can say okay anyone who's visited your charity website in the past 180 days who also has a birthday next week let's send them an ad to set up a birthday for us and we can do that and it's very very low cost so we did that for baby loss awareness week we spent two thousand pounds and we raised sixty eight thousand pounds so it doesn't have to be big budget because it's quite a small audience but those people who then set up a fundraiser are raising um Reason and actually, Sands get quite a high because of the topic of fundraising, they get quite a high average fundraiser. Um, there's a couple of questions, so we just literally finish these slides. Yes, and we're, we we're very over time, so oh, yes, we're over time. okay, well, we're done. <laughs> just to say, <laughs> look at that. Um, we are starting free trials today, so up until now, we've been in private beta. So today, literally, you can uh, sign up for a free trial, and you're the only ones that know this link. So, um, if you want to, if your charity wants to get a free trial, then that is the link. Um, and that's it really. There's some a few more useful resources in here when we send it round. Um, but grab that and uh, any questions or what do you want to do next? Let's so, give him a big round of applause. Um.